your government your government has come under uh, you know considerable uh, fire, I guess, for the carbon tax, and and you did offer some relief on on home heating fuel in certain parts of the country. Um, was there any consideration, or is there any consideration on on turning that to natural gas as well? And I understand that it was to allow some retrofitting, but I mean these these costs are, are hurting people. Uh, let me be very very clear, because there's unfortunately a lot of misinformation and deliberate disinformation by conservative politicians uh, around uh, the price on pollution and around the Canada carbon rebate that's being delivered across the country. We took a look at what the dirtiest type of fuel out there is for people to heat their homes with and that's home heating oil. It is more expensive it is more vulnerable to international price shocks and fluctuations, and it's dirtier and more polluting than just about any other way of heating your home. However, it's also proportionately more used by people who are at the lower income of the uh, lower uh, levels of income in older homes who can't perhaps afford to upgrade to a heat pump or to other ways but of doing it. So relief to certain Canadians. The same way we made a decision as a country that we were going to phase out coal as a source of, of creating electricity because it's so polluting, we knew that phasing out home heating oil would make a lot of sense. I can guarantee you in all of these smart modular homes, there's not a single one of them uh, going to be built with home heating oil built in, right? No, that's, it's not an efficient, it doesn't make sense in our new builds to do this. He had to check. So what we said was those communities, and yes, proportionately there's a lot in Atlantic Canada, but they're right across the country. This isn't a project or a program for one part of the country versus others. It applies to the hundreds of thousands of homes right across the country that still rely on home heating oil, where we've said, we're going to put a pause on the price on pollution on home heating oil for the next three years while we bring in a program that is going to deliver heat pumps as an alternative to home heating oil because it's cheaper, because it's more efficient, because it's better for the environment and more reliable. Now, the challenge on that is the upfront cost is significant, particularly for low-income families, even though it pays for itself in the savings over the course of a few years or a decade, that upfront cost is a barrier, which is why we've created a uh, uh, heating oil to heat pump program nationally that is there to support people so that they can get that capital investment that they can then pay off over the years. On top of that, with a number of provinces, we are working to make sure that anyone at or below uh, median income will basically get a free heat pump installed to replace home heating oil. That's going to make a huge difference. And uh, we've been calling on the government of Ontario, like so many other governments across the country, to step up with this because it's a way of saving money, it's a way of supporting people, and it's a way of fighting climate change and being more energy efficient at the same time. Okay. So that's a perfect example of this program that is not a regional program, that is a program that will have an impact right across the country because it takes supports right across the country to fight climate change. Okay, we get now, that. We get that. But the other aspect of uh, the how much price on pollution emissions is it that going to certainly reduce? conservative politicians don't want about to talk 2%. about okay. so is that by this, eight are we out of be ten now at families or 1.2%? How much are we going to reduce the our global emissions? In jurisdictions like Ontario, no where the federal pollution no pricing output. regime is in place, eight out of ten families get more money back every year from the, the Canada thing. carbon rebate checks that arrive four times a year than it actually costs them in climate change, uh, in the, the carbon price. <laughs> So what you're actually change. looking at is for a, a family oh, of four, man. particularly a, a rural family of four in Ontario, you're about $1,300 a year is the checks you get from the See, federal government, $1,100 uh, for more urban areas. But that is more. How much more global GHG emissions gets reduced by this program? Eight out of ten families in this uh, in this Canada country Canada is about two percent a year of global emissions. The so we're going to be at 1.5 uh, percent in terms 1. of carbon percent. So we are. Moving together outcome? in a way that actually fights climate change, that encourages 
companies and industries to invest in lower carbon footprints because it costs them less and it puts money back in the pockets of the middle class. That's the affordability and the fight against climate change that is core to building a better future for everyone. There's been some controversy surrounding the cost of the Arrive Can app. Uh, can you please uh, address that and, and why did it cost so much? Uh, this uh, was obviously an unacceptable situation where procurement processes uh, internal to the government of Canada uh, ended up uh, not following the proper rules at a time where uh, the government was doing everything it could to try and keep Canadians safe in a never-before-seen pandemic. Uh, and uh, it, is, uh, it is certainly uh, possible uh, and indeed likely uh, that certain people took advantage of the procurement processes at that time. That's why there are fulsome investigations going on right now. That's why there will be consequences for anyone who uh, tried to profiteer uh, or profit off of uh, this uh, extraordinarily difficult situation we went through a few years ago. You mean you let Next your government question. slip? Jordan Umstead with the Canadian Press. How is a scientist working on high security viruses at the National Microbiology Lab allowed to collaborate with Chinese government agencies considered a threat to Canada? A number of years ago, uh, the, our security systems, our, our intelligence and security agencies uh, flagged problems at the Winnipeg labs uh, that were followed up on. We know as a country that increasingly uh, countries like China and others are trying to either uh, influence uh, or uh, get secrets out of our country. And that's why we have to continue to be extraordinarily vigilant about how we're uh, making sure we're doing everything necessary to keep people safe, to keep our research institutions safe. As a government, we've taken many, many initiatives and I've uh, tasked our National Security and Intelligence Advisor uh, to look uh, even deeper at this Winnipeg's lab situation and make recommendations on how we can move forward appropriately. Uh, this is uh, something that people would expect governments to take seriously and expect all parliamentarians to take seriously. Unfortunately, throughout this process, we have seen the Conservative Party, specifically Pierre Polyev, choosing to spew conspiracy theories and drum up political attacks, partisan attacks, on an issue that quite frankly should be bringing Canadians and parliamentarians together to try and solve this. The quickness with you. which they're looking for partisan advantage is not just undermining Canadians' trust in the system, but interfering with no, the ability of Parliament you. to deal with this. One of the reasons it has taken so long to get this report into Parliament is because of the choice that Conservatives made to try and extract any amount of political advantage by drumming up uh, a, a level of, of partisanship and toxicity that is not serving Canadians. There's lots of opportunity to have responsible political debates about how we're moving forward as a country and what needs to be fixed, what's being done well, what needs to be done yeah, better. Absolutely. That's fine, but when that's there's part of the give and in take in our democracy. Monies are going but all the, over the choice place. to weaponize national <laughs> security in a way that is rife with conspiracy theories uh, and partisan attacks is a choice that I don't think is worthy of the kind of responsible leadership that Canadians deserve. I will also add that uh, hearing uh, two particular Conservative members, Michael Chong and James Bazan, suddenly uh, being uh, front and centre on issues of security and international impact after having been complete ghosts over the past number of months on anything to do with standing up for Ukraine, for example, or even on the matter of uh, their colleague, Les than Lewis, calling for uh, a withdrawal from the United Nations of, the, of, of Canada. Um, they won't say a thing. You but when it comes to making partisan attacks 
out of an issue he that should uh, be se taken Chong seriously his, by all part of parliamentarians, was attacked by it's not worthy the PRC, of an official and this, this opposition. government did nothing about it. He told you, Trudeau last about question. it multiple times. Katie Nichols, Dougal Media. I'm just he wondering, you had mentioned about, uh, about the cost Chong of groceries. Wow. They're set to still rise by upwards of 5% for 2024, even like though like housing is coming security. in. People still have to eat even though the federal government has met with the top five grocery chains, what else is being done to help Canadians at the cash register? Uh, we've actually passed legislation uh, around increasing powers to uh, the Competition Bureau in Canada to be able to ensure transparency and accountability from uh, our five uh, largest grocery chains. Over the past number of years, we have seen a tremendous consolidation of uh, major grocery stores in this country under just five different owners or five different uh, different groups uh, and we need to make sure there is a level of accountability and transparency in their practices to make sure uh, that Canadians are being uh, properly and fairly treated. These large grocery companies are making billions of dollars of profit at a time where Canadians are having to make excruciatingly difficult choices uh, at the cash register on, uh, during the checkout. And that is not right. So by using the tools the federal government has around transparency and accountability, uh, we're holding uh, those uh, grocery companies to account to and uh, expecting life. to see stabilization of food prices. Unfortunately, to to yet again, conservatives are choosing to play politics to with this, have delayed the passage of the He's Competition Act that. powers uh, and are indeed voting against uh, some of these measures that are there to support Canadians uh, in a time where people need uh, governments to be there to support them with affordability.